Uh, yeah, so July 11th, 2016 was a, was a pretty big day. It's the day I went in the ocean with my paramotor. And I went in for a couple different reasons, and mainly is because of, well, the reason I went in the ocean was because of weather and geographical um, topography. But the reason why I struggled so much and almost didn't make it was, was to be honest, my fault. And, and I was over the beach when it happened, but by the time I made contact with the earth again, I was 150 feet out into the ocean and unprepared, like I said before that. And I struggled for the next hour and a half for my life. This whole project actually stemmed from an idea that uh, Dan Fisher, uh, who's letting us use surf camp here, amazing place on Flathead Lake, um, probably about a year ago, um, he wanted, he said to me, Canyon, we should take my old scout and we should crash it in the lake. Um, I want to see what happens. I think this whole team, we've got a team of like 20 people, you know, six or seven pilots and, 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 uh, and we just want to put, put some paramotors in the water in different configurations, like, uh, with flotation, without flotation, upwind, downwind. Um, trying to create the scenario of maybe you know you're going to land in the water and you got the opportunity to <clears throat> you've got the opportunity to do a little prepping so maybe you can get your buckles off um, so maybe some entries into the water uh, with people without their buckles on in our industry the folks that aren't paramotor pilots in our industry this is known to be the biggest killer of paramotor pilots is landing in the water and end up in like a face down drowning, can't get out of the buckles type scenario. No drinking tomorrow. We, this is straight up, man. This is serious business. The wind was blowing so hard that the reserve never got wet. It stayed inflated and I went face first. The reserve is here, I'm face first. My wing is wrapped up in me. Well, it becomes wrapped up in me and becomes uh, dragging behind me as this reserve is pulling me out to, to sea. Face first is plowing, and um, I struggled and I struggled and I struggled to right myself. I couldn't get my buckles undone. Everything was tight, and I couldn't right myself, and I accepted reality. I accepted the fact that, oh, this is, I'm, I'm done. I can't get righted, I, I, this is it. We'd like to try to maybe get uh, everybody that's going to uh, fly into the water tomorrow, uh, get a scout mounted on them and jumping off of the dock, um, just to start getting comfortable with undoing buckles and and some of the different scenarios with uh, flotation without flotation, just to see how how the equipment reacts. Right. Yeah, and, it, and as each one of the pilots enter the water, um, there's just so much unexpected things that could happen we, we just we don't have any data so we don't know if everybody's going to end up face down um, is the machine and the weight of the motor going to act like a keel and try to roll uh, try to roll you back over so that you're face up and another another huge factor is going to be as we enter the water you know I, I visualize myself staying calm from a background of being around water a bunch but I've never been in the water with a 60 pound thing strapped to my back you know, all you know, it's it's going to be an awkward position. I'm, I mean, there's chance for panic there. Um, so we don't know how each pilot's going to react as as they enter the water. Not as easy as I thought. Uh, the trouble with the chest strap. I ended up just swimming out. Um, out of the chest strap, we got all the other ones done. So it's not like real inspiring. It doesn't make me want to go uh, fall into the water with the motor and the wing above me, so. And I think another big factor is gonna be the clothing that people are wearing. Uh, you know, I think we're, we're gonna to try to simulate the normal clothes that people would wear in the summer this time of year. Um, my first one, we I intend on going in with all my winter gear on. Um, Cause I, I, I've found myself flying near water in the winter. 
So I'm going to have my muck boots on, my ski pants, my expedition weight capoline on, um, uh, my ski coat. I'm going to have gloves on. I think that's something that all pilots should always be considering, especially if they're dabbling with that potentially landing in the water situation. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of other factors than just, did I put flotation on my machine? And uh, how, how am I going to be, how well am I going to swim? I, f I feel like uh, maybe getting out of the machine might not be the roughest part. As soon as I got in the water, these boots were actually buoyant. And uh, so my feet were able to float up. I was back treading water fine. Um, and then I rolled over, over onto my belly and started doing the crawl. And then the boots just started slowly filling up and stuff started getting like molasses. And I had like five pounds of water in each arm. Everything was just filling up more and more. And I was stroking and stroking and that last 10 feet felt like a mile. Mm -hmm. And I know that if, if I had been by myself, I think there was a good chance if, it, if I would have had another 30 yards that I had to go, mm -hmm. that I may not have made it. Yeah. I'm going to go in slightly sideways and then I think I'm just going to go straight for the chest strap and uh, I may take a breath of air before I come out or I may not. The arms came out okay but because I got pants on, the legs were very difficult to get out, very difficult. So I had to come back up again for more air. Because my arms were out and my chest strap was on, that was possible. So it's just a matter of fighting my way out and getting the legs, but it was a whole different thing with pants on and shoes on. So that, there's, a lot, there's a lot to think about. There's, there's water landing. Are you prepared for it? Do you know how to get out of your equipment? Do you know how to get out of your equipment if the buckles are tight? Do you know how to get out of your equipment if you can't see? I, can you get out of your equipment if you're absolutely panicked? There's one thing of practicing in your garage, but there's another thing of, of actual real time. All right, well, the, the scenario I want to try is I want to try to getting out of uh, like a fully buckled harness with my gloves on. I'm worried about the gloves and not getting the tactile feel to be able to grab them and release them all the way up and then swim out. Uh, I, I thought I had my last strap, but it wasn't there. So I realized I'm still stuck under here. I have to game plan this. I have to go and grab it. I have to push it in. I was actually having a hard time trying to get that last one because I don't have the tactile feel with it. And trying to remember to push it in feel for the little nubs, pull it apart. Once I got it, and it was free. Swim on out, it was, <laughs> it was there, I had a little more time. Not too much more. In this instance, my plan did work. I was able to unbuckle the chicken strap, chest strap thing, get my shoulders out of the shoulder straps and without kicking, swim forward, letting my legs just slip through the waist and leg straps. And by not kicking, you're less likely to get the lines coming, vortexing down around your legs and getting caught more. So I just used my uh, swim stroke with my hands to get away and out and it worked very quickly and a little bit like I expected it to. It took about five seconds to get out hit the water immediately, brought my arm up, did the chicken strap, grabbed my shoulders and used this one fluid motion to push myself out. Uh, my feet hung on the straps just a little bit, but I just wiggled them and I was out it's so fast. And it's probably the way to do it, honestly. And that's it, great. So I, uh, I jumped in, um, acting as if the flotation device didn't work, if I could right myself. Um, I did right myself, but it was burned a lot of energy, and it was hard to stay there. Um, the next issue would be if you were out of gas, you're going to have a lot more buoyancy below you that's going to be harder to right yourself. So after I righted myself, um, I tried unbuckling the straps, but it was pushing pretty tight. The buckles were extremely tight, so it was pretty hard to unbuckle with the pressure on the buckles. So I say as soon as you're in the water, go for the buckles. It's going to be the probably the fastest solution. When you're laying face down, that's on top of you. Your straps aren't as tight, I believe, and it's going to be a lot easier to unbuckle then than it is after you get righted. So.
it seems like a lot of people are going, oh, we're going to fly near water, we're going to fly over water. Oh, I don't have my power floats on, I can't fly over water. No, you probably shouldn't be flying over water anyways. It's almost like this, there's some products that have come out that makes everybody feel like, hey, I can, as long as I have this, I'm going to be all right. Yeah, I uh, plan on going in and really the, the main, main uh, test is the power floats, seeing if how I have them mounted on the machine, they will uh, right me with my head up. And, you know, they're kind of in the way on the shoulder straps. I, I want to see if this uh, will right me mounting them where I have. Well, it didn't go as I expected. Uh, one I was counting on my power floats. I had two of them. I really felt that if one went off, I was going to be, you know, floated head up. And that uh, that's not the case. And it was actually a little disturbing to me to, to realize that. Um, and my takeaway from this is... I'm, I'm definitely going to be more respectful of flying over the water until some kind of dual redundancy float can right the machine up if I'm unconscious and, and work system. like a, a system that's going to roll you over like, like a life Let's say you go in and you hit a rock or you, you're pitched into the, you know, ocean. You just missed it. You didn't quite make it. Somehow you got knocked out. We should be able to figure that out. If I could only have one, I would definitely have the uh, one on my probably waist for me. It's easy. Um, and as far as the one on the motor, yeah, I would definitely not rely on that. Um, but I also don't know for sure, depending on the situation, if it could be actually a really pr a bad problem but it did appear to lock Aaron's face down in without any vision so that was concerning for sure you know don't slap on flotation and think that you're just golden and that you're gonna land in the water and it's gonna just be I'm floating here no problem uh, there's a lot of different scenarios that can unfold during this whole project we had um, just absolutely perfect, safest conditions imaginable. We had uh, the exhaust and the intake plugged on the motors, which would make them more buoyant. The water itself was completely calm and flat. Um, the rescue team that we had in place, we had two different rescue boats with a scuba diver on each boat. But what a lot of people don't understand is that, yeah, okay, I can get out of my gear. I can make it to shore but we were flying on a part of the coast that was undeveloped for all intents and purposes. Like there's no cell phone service, there's no power lines, there's one town before Shelter Cove that has 12 people in it, <laughs> you know, and, a, and one landline at the bar. So the, I don't think this project is about definitive answers about where to put your flotation or whether or not to use flotation or to put it on yourself versus your machine. I mean, I think that's a choice for every pilot. Um, but I think it is important to know your kit inside and out. We're just asking a bunch of questions at this point, you know, by doing this stuff. And hopefully the folks that, that watch this video will ask questions and, and we can expand on maybe finding more and more answers in the future. But I think what a lot of people fail to realize is that, am I prepared for what happens after I get out of the water, if I make it? How far am I away from things? How cold is it? You know, like, are you prepared? Do you have a wet bag with dry clothes in it? You know, or dry bag with, with, dry, with dry clothes in it? Do you have um, fuel for your body? You know, some snacks? Do you have hydration to make it? Um, we're at the ocean, you can't drink the ocean water. And it's an hour and a half drive to the next city. You know, do you have, are you, are you prepared to make it back to civilization? Downwinder, that's another concern too. I mean, as, as paramotor pilots, we never land downwind. It'll get blowing, you know, maybe 15, 20 miles an hour. 
So we're, you know, we're talking maybe entering the water on a downwinder at 40 miles an hour. And I'm pretty sure that any pair motor that lands in the water at 40 miles an hour, their feet are gonna hurt, hit first and it's gonna be a huge face plant. Is that gonna be enough to rattle somebody, knock them out, or just disorient them to the point where they're not able to think straight to rescue themselves?